Today, online videos are forecasted to make up close to 80% of the worldwide web traffic. It is due to this fact that the job markets for film and video editors are exploding. Be it YouTube tutorials, Instagram videos, Reels, TikToks, the way we share and exchange information has changed forever. The advent of mobile phone cameras has made the process of video editing very simple. It has also become accessible for everyone. It is no longer an extremely expensive and complex process that could only be undertaken by large production studios. It is, however, the process of manipulating and rearranging video shots to create new work. Editing is usually considered to be one part of the post-production process. Other post-production tasks include titling, color correction, sound mixing, etc. etc. And in order to throw some light on the process, we have come up with this video on introduction to video editing. Before we get started, I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy, a free initiative by Great Learning where you can access over 200 plus courses with 1000 hours of free content on trending high demand domains such as data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, programming, cloud computing, digital marketing, DevOps, management and many more. Absolutely free. These courses are designed by award winning academicians and leading industry experts. You can also get a free certificate of completion when you enroll and complete these free courses. You also get access to the presentations, code notebooks, data sets and quiz. We have courses in English and in Hindi as well to give you the best learning experience in the language you are comfortable with. Check out the description of this video to access the relevant course on Great Learning Academy. So what are you waiting for? Register now and start your learning journey today. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, so make sure you are sharing this video with your friends and colleagues as well. Make sure to comment on the video any queries or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Hello, my name is Saurabh Mukherjee and welcome to this video with the introduction to video editing. Basically, video editing is that complicated process people in the film business call post-production. In this video, we should learn how to edit a video to create a nice clean video. And I should teach you about editing techniques and principles that have been applied in movies since a very long time. Things like the close of shots, wide angles and uh, all sorts of other tips and tricks that editors use. So what is video editing? So video editing generally means the manipulation and arrangement of videos that have been shot to be put together to convey an idea or a message that you're trying to convey. So these shots are generally taken with the idea of a longer narrative in mind in which all these shots fall into their place. Most of these shots are planned in advance before going into the shooting phase itself, which is known as pre-production. Once shot and once, repeat, once the shooting phase is over, most of these videos are then put into post-production where editing comes in. Video editing is used to structure and present all video information, including films, television shows, video advertisements, video essays, interviews, and, and it has become extremely popular in the recent years because of the advent of the editing softwares available to all people, which is available to all people to download from the internet and use on their own computers. Editing video can be difficult at times and very tedious, so several technologies have been produced to aid people in this task. And as technology advances, these techniques are becoming more haptic and easier to use by a larger number of people. So before video editing, we had film editing, which is the base of which forms video editing. Films were shot on reels and those reels were then spliced with a blade and then joined to another piece of film on a flatbed editor which was known as linear video editing. 
But now we are going to talk about non-linear video editing, which is also known as software video editing. So the goal of video editing is to manipulate events and finally communicate what the original goal or target was in a visual format. Now let's talk about the types of editing. We won't dwell too deep into this. This is just for a broader perspective. Initially, we had some very expensive machines which video editors would use, which were not available to everyone and which were hard to maintain and generally complicated and extremely expensive. Then, so initially, it all started with linear video editing. It used video tape and is edited in a very linear way. Several video clips from different tapes are recorded into one single tape in that order and they would appear. Then came non-linear video editing, in which video was to be edited on computers with specialized software. This process is not destructive to the raw footage and is done by using programs such as DaVinci Resolve, Avid Media Composer, Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. Then there is cloud-based editing. This is the most recent form of video editing in which we utilize the internet to work with content remotely or collaborate with you. And especially this is done during a time critical nature. This is live events, sports events, uh, live TV shows, news, broadcasts. So generally the technology used for this is quite different. They could also be a internet uplink or a satellite uplink to broadcast live streams all across the world. Another new form, relatively new form of video editing is video mixing, vision mixing. It is used when working with line television or video production environments where a vision mixer is used to cut live feed coming from several cameras in real time. This is extensively seen in sports matches especially when you have multiple cameras. Vision mixing is also sometimes uh, known as switching. And these are done in like, uh, you might have seen these controlled TV studios or sports studios or live studios where a bunch of editors are sitting together with different roles to play and they generally have a producer in the room as well who's shouting out instructions. Now we move on to careers and applications of video editing. As you know, most entertainment fields have a position for video editors. It could be in filmmaking, under filmmaking, you have your motion pictures, you have documentaries, you have series, even YouTube is full of filmmakers and video producers constantly making engaging content for everyone to view. The news is another key player when it comes to hiring video editors. They need a lot of editors and a lot of time to keep producing content. Sports again is somewhere where we see a lot of job openings for video editors and television, especially the serials, which are made on a daily basis, season to season, episode to episode, also need editors. Advertisements as well. They say advertisements generally hire the best editors there are because they're immensely expensive and they're high on effects and visual effects and all kinds of, you know, different techniques that you wouldn't see in regular filmmaking. You might see it in the motion pictures, but advertisements generally put in a lot into post-production. Now, we come to video editing jargon. So, the video editing jargon consists of many, many words that you would have to keep in mind when you begin editing. So, editing is not a fairly complicated process. But when you're working in a group with many other people, each of you needs to understand what the other is saying. So there are many words that video editors, directors and producers of films use constantly. And to a layman, they might seem completely Martian at times. But if you understand these terms, it, editing becomes a very simple process. And these are just some of them. But keep in mind, there are many other words as well. So the first word, aspect ratio. Aspect ratio relates to the width and the height of your video and how they relate to each other. Those dimensions are expressed through a ratio. Most common examples are 4 by 3, which is your television ratio, or PAL 16 by 9, which is your HD ratio. There's also 1.85 by 1 and so on and so forth. Even 4K has its own ratio, which is 16 by 10. 
and uh, and there are many such ratios to keep in mind when it comes to aspect ratio. I won't go too deep into that, but uh, this is generally the, based on the uh, viewing platform. So if videos were to be made for cell, mobile phones, they have a different aspect ratio. If they were to be made for television, they have a different aspect ratio, depending on the final viewing environment to decide your aspect ratio. Also, aspect ratio is to be decided in the pre-production phase as well, when you realize which camera you're going to use and how you're going to shoot. Now we come to B-roll. B-roll is basically nothing but, uh, again, footage from a second camera generally is referred to as B-roll, but B-roll is also uh, referred to as any other footage that you might have, which with which you would splice your main video. So B-roll gives you flexibility according to the video editing rules when editing because it is supplemental footage that makes a previously incorporated scene smooth. B-roll can even provide more details to support the scene like in the news, weddings, films or interviews. Suppose you were shooting, shooting footage of a person walking in a park and you wanted to shift to a new view of the subject. A B-roll like the image of a park can be inserted to make the transition easy on the eyes. Bitrate. For every second in the video, there is a thing known as the bitrate or the data rate. It is the amount of data used each second. This is most commonly measured in kilobits per second. Kbps or Mbps is the other. However, this generally defines the quality of your video as well. If you add the output size, as in how big the final file would be once exported. So a lower bitrate gives a smaller file size, which is easy to upload and share on platforms such as WhatsApp, Instagram, and things like that. Whereas a higher bitrate would be a higher quality, basically for movie viewing and you know when you don't really care about the size of the final output. Close-ups. Close-ups are shots that frame the subject tacky. So for example, if a person if the subject were a person, the close-up would be filled with their face in the frame. The frame would just be their face. You can even go closer and just the eyes, that would be an extreme close-up. Color temperature. Color temperature is measured in the unit Kelvin and the scale ranges from cool to warm. The video editing terms refers to the visible light in a shot. For instance, oh. Cooler color temperatures have a bluish tint and hotter temperatures tend to appear more red or orange. This is a this is a slightly more complex concept which we will not get into too much right now. Compression. Compression is the process of reducing the amount of data in the video file. This makes the uploading and downloading processes for your videos much quicker. While it does take time to compress your video, it can save a lot of time later. This is related to bitrate in some sense and also formats and uh, file codecs, so we won't get much into compression either. Crop factor comes from the camera and the sensor. Actually, uh, original film would have been 35 mm. The size of the original film was 35 mm, but uh, due to the advent of digital cameras and we do not use film anymore. There are digital cameras known as full frame, which will give you a full frame image. However, if some di different digital cameras, their sensors are smaller, they create a crop factor. That crop factor is to be kept in mind when shooting, so that if you were to match a full frame image with a image that was shot on a camera that wasn't full frame, the crop factor comes in handy. Okay, cutting. Cut-in is a type of shot that most often shows the objects, the subjects in contact with or manipulating. Cut-in shots are similarly helpful to B-roll because they stray away from the subject for a short period of time. This is also known as the insert shot. Poly. Poly is when you reproduce sound to create sound for a film. Often times the actual sounds of nature, chewing are not naturally captured. They are actually reproduced in a studio. There are many, many poly artists that come into a studio and create like, you know, if you were to watch Jurassic Park, the shaking of the leaves, the running of the animals, these are all done in studios with folly artists. Frame rate. 
Frame rate is the rate at which your shutter cycles through opening and closing or when this shutter sensor captures video in a second period. Common frame rate examples are 24, 25, 29, 0.97, 30, 50, 60. The frame rate is also expressed through frames per second, FPS. We will get into that later, but frames, higher frame rate generally means a larger video output as well. HDMI, high definition media interface. I think a lot of us have heard of this. These are connectors that digital carry audio and HD video to a television. And uh, in a production studio, you can connect HDMI to your screen so that you have multiple screens to edit on. JCut. JCut are used when editing footage to have the audio from the next shot precede the video. The JCut is not short for jump cut. The name actually comes from the shape a JCut makes when you're editing on a program's timeline. Jump cut. Jump cuts make your production look amateur because they are abrupt changes between sequential clips. The subject in a production that has jump cuts appears to jump across the screen from one spot to the other. The shots don't fit together to be disruptive to the audience. But then again, jump cuts are also used to jump through time and space within a linear narrative. L cut. The exact opposite of J cuts because the video is edited so that the video's image changes from one shot to the other, but the initial shot's audio continues into the next clip. Like a J cut, like a J cut, an L cut has its name because of its appearance in the timeline of your editing software. Lower third. The name of this video editing term lower third derives from the rule of thirds. You will get to that in a while. A lower third is a type of title used commonly by news broadcasters, YouTubers, vloggers, and interviewers. It is generally information put at the on the in the lower half of the screen to convey people's names, company logos, and certain other information. A memory bank is surprisingly not the same as a memory card. It is and memory banks are more similar to memory box in that they capture a certain time or event in someone's life. The difference is a memory bank does this through video, not by keeping the physical objects. Memory banks often use natural sounds rather than folly, a set to music, document travel, or importantly, they can simply record moments in daily life. Not only editing we had spoken about earlier. Hands. Hands are fixed and horizontal movements made with your camera. They are the opposite of tilts. Uh, pixel aspect ratio is something you can keep in mind and check on later. Uh, we will not get into it. A press kit. Press kit generally provides information about your production to the press so as to promote it. This information is typically background that can include the crew's cast, bio, synopsis, a question and answer with the members of the crew such as director and stills from your production. However, this uh, comes in handy when you're working on a large production but if you're just going to make videos for yourself then you don't have to worry about a press kit. Resolution again is similar to your aspect ratio. Resolution refers to the actual number of horizontal and vertical pixels your video contains. For example, 1920, 720, 480, these are all different types of resolutions. Shortlist. The shortlist is essentially a checklist of all shots the videographer wants to include in the production. By planning shots ahead of a shoot, you can be more efficient with your time. And your productions will also have a sense of direction and motion. A storyboard consists of drawings that illustrate all of the scenes in your production. The organized and direct way to visualize what needs to be shot or animated. Sync. A production is synchronized when the audio aligns with the video image. This is generally done when you have a separate audio recording device and a separate camera and you need to sync the audio to the video. Now we come to the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is a helpful grip to keep in mind when shooting footage because it makes your production aesthetically pleasing. Imagine a tic-tac-toe board aligned directly over your image, the grid. The grid for the rule of thirds looks like a tic-tac-toe board because it separates the image into nine separate sections. The rule of thirds suggests that points of interest line up with the lines or instruct sections on the grid. As you can see in this image, the woman is aligned to the top right grid, the intersection of the top right grids. And that is basically separating the image into three distinct portions. Another thing is a three-point lighting. This is one of the simplest and most useful lighting 
techniques. Right now we won't get much into it, but uh, it just means that three lights are used to fill a frame. Tilts. Tilts are vertical movements made with your camera that are fixed. Tilts are the opposite of pans. White balance is another concept that we will not get into now, but uh, a proper white balance is categorized by the whites in an image, truly being the color white. I mean, proper white balance can give you a yellowish tint or a bluish tint to your video. Wide angle. These are lenses that have short focal length with respect to the body of the lens. These lenses include more of the subject than a normal lens of the same side at equal distance. If you are using a wide angle lens while filming, a subject may appear warped. These were some words to keep in mind during your edit. Basic principles of video editing. Now let's get to the basic principles of video editing, which will help you make a video and understand how videos are made. So one of the key and most important principle is to organize your footage. I will show you this in a hands-on example as well. But how does one organize their footage when editing? So there are many ways to do this. The first being creating your project folders. So generally this is a very easy step and it's generally missed by a lot of editors. You could think of it in a way that you're going for a holiday but instead of folding your clothes neatly you just throw everything into one big suitcase and you know when you reach there everything is going to be extremely messy and you'll regret it. So initially what uh, video editors do is they create bins. The concept of bins basically comes from the fact that uh, during times of linear editing, there used to be cans of footage put into like buckets of bins and hung all across the room. So now you can just think of them as your folders. So you have to make your folders. You have to make your project folder within which you should make your video folder within which you should make your camera folders and so on and so forth. And in your uh, editing software, you shall have a similar arrangement in which you can have your bins. And bins can relate to different characters or they can be labeled according to the camera numbers or the types of shots depending on your project. So yeah, how many bins you create uh, really depends on the complexity of your video production. You can start with the basics interview and b-roll. The interview bin is obviously for the footage of your speaker. B-roll is all for the extra footage you shot for your company employees doing what they do in case you're making a copy video or a copy interview. If you interview multiple subjects, create a bin for each person. If you have a large complex business, you may want to split the B-roll and bin into smaller, more manageable bins. Now let's come to import your footage. However, if that is done with your software and uh, you can move your footage into the appropriate bin, your video files most likely have a file name that looks like a number, bunch of numbers and dates and so on and so forth. So that gets confusing later. So you need to change the name into something useful and descriptive. You can keep it simple and you can just change it to the name of the person you're interviewing or you can change it to the place you've taken the video or the scene it refers to. And if you've shot with two or three cameras, you can say camera one, camera two, camera three and so on and so forth. So that is your file naming and for B-roll, Give each shot a unique name. That helps you identify its purpose in your video. That's about it. When it comes to organizing your footage, we shall look at uh, organizing your footage with a practical example as well. Step 2. Assembly cut. The assembly cut is also known as the first cut or the rough cut. It contains the main message of the video and is generally based on the main camera's footage. So, if you have a talking subject for example, you can begin with a wide shot of the talking subject which is your main camera. You don't need to worry about the close-ups or the rolls or anything of that sort. Just play with the interview straight through. Anytime you hear something you like, place it in the timeline. So you're watching it in your, pro, not in your main monitor, but in your viewing monitor, which is also known as your source monitor. I shall get to that in a time. Don't worry about how long the video is at this stage. Don't worry if it makes sense. Just focus on finding the bits you find interesting and useful. Once you have everything you might possibly need, once you have everything you might use, you can put those little little bits into your timeline, which is basically your assembly cutter. 
Treat it like an essay you're writing. Focus entirely on the words arrange them in a way that clarifies what your your initial idea was and what you're trying to convey. Remove unnecessary phrases. Don't repeat information. Now listen to it again and don't worry about what you see on the screen. It will look a bit choppy. It will feel long. But every part contributes to your video. And it's impossible to get the best when you're editing. Best is a, a very relative term. And... What happens is most producers have a niche for themselves and that they end up excelling in. And uh, generally they're very good in one genre of a video. May it be interviews, documentaries, horror, corporate weddings. And every editor is generally the best at every kind of editing. And that is what generally sets an editor apart and creates a unique selling point and helps them, you know, uh, overcome competition. And there is no hard and fast rule for the length of your videos. They should be entertaining and convey the message you want to convey. Inserts, close-ups and cutaways. Inserts are shots or details that you want the audience to notice. Close-ups are closer shots of the subject who is speaking. Cutaways are shots of something not in the scene but relate to the speaker and what he is talking about. Together, these three types of shots can be used not only to speed up the pace of your video but also cover up mistakes and jump cuts. If your subject is saying something particularly important, Wait for a key phrase and cut to a close-up. This is a signal to the audience that what the person is saying is very important. If you shot with two cameras and you want to use the same audio in both the shots, a very useful tool is Prunalize. We will talk about that probably some other time and not in this video. And another way to obtain a close-up if you couldn't shoot with two cameras is to splice a shot into two. Then zoom in or blow up the second shot. Keep an eye on the picture quality though. If you zoom in too much, the image tends to pixelate. This is also a useful technique when you rearrange the speech by cutting to a close-up or back to a wide shot if you already had a close-up. You visually smooth out the transition from one thought to the next. Sometimes you'll have to piece together a thought from several takes or different points in the recording, forming a kind of, you know, uh, mashed up sentence. You don't want the image to jump around and that would be visually very distracting. You can cover this with an insert or a cutaway. Basically keep looking through your brain until you find a clip that relates to whatever you're talking about. Insert that into your timeline to cover up any odd visual patches and then sit back and look at your video again from starting to finish. This brings us to fine tuning. This is the process of the cut. This is where a editor generally finds his rhythm and each editor generally have their natural rhythm. You need to naturally feel when a shot is too long or too short and be very conscious of what you're watching. You need to step away from the edit and watch it. You should sometimes get a second person to watch your edit. Cutting from one shot to another might seem unnatural but it actually mimics the way we see the world. Basically look at the left corner of your room. Left top corner. Of your the room you're in. Now look at the right. Did your eyes sweep smoothly from one side of the room to the other? Or did it blink? And did you miss the transition completely? So yeah, that's what cutting is. As you're reviewing your video, pay attention to when you blink. If a shot feels too long, it's probably because you blink just before the cut. If it's too short, you blink after. Once you've adjusted every single edit, go back and watch the video again. Fine tune the edits again, watch it again, edit it again, repeat this over and over until you're truly satisfied with what you've done. But this brings us to our final step. These are just basic steps. These don't actually represent what professional editors do. There are many, many more intricacies involved and many, many more processes when you're actually editing professionally. So this is the cleanup. This is sort of difficult to master at first, but uh, there are a few processes such as color correction, sound mastering, these we'll talk about right now. Otherwise, there's also visual effects and animations and many, many layers to what a cleanup could involve uh, in the editing process. So let's talk about cleanup in a more general term. Once you're satisfied with the pace of your thing, it's time to picture lock. This means you won't change any more cuts or rearrange any dialogue. Now it's time to make your video look and sound good. Color grading. 
uh, it's kind of like what a photographer does in Photoshop with the colors. It involves adjusting the color temperature, brightness, contrast, and other fine details in your video. And there are a lot of tools out there which help us do this. In fact, there are tools in built, built into Adobe Premiere itself which you can use to achieve that. So I won't get into how it's generally done, but uh, just the basic reason for why we do it is because most digital cameras shoot flat or low contrast images. This allows your software more room to work with brightening and darkening the image and you get more detail when you shoot raw. If you already shoot with a patched on color preset in the camera, then there's little or nothing you can do later. So that is how color correction works. You can increase the contrast, you can uh, play with the exposure and there are many many other such settings. And once you're satisfied with the image, you copy those settings onto your footage. Depending on the lighting in each shot also, it's a tedious process and it takes time. The other thing is the sound. While recording audio, you almost certainly pick, pick up some background noise. Luckily, there are a lot of effects in Premiere Pro to help you clean that out. You can clean up background noise, yeah, you can remove unwanted uh, sounds in the environment and you really then can get studio quality sound. It's like uh, completely flat background, no bounce back. These are again terms that I will not get into right now, but uh, they're important when, when it comes to sound mastering. And within the sound, then you add your uh, soundtracks and you, you know master the volume so that the vocals are clear and the music is loud enough and when there's no vocals there are more music there are also sound effects like people clapping people laughing external folly and many other things that go into sound and it's basically you can imagine doing a small concert on your timeline you're basically composing everything together and seeing what sounds right and really mastering requires good headphones or studio monitors as audio speakers etc etc and it's also a very tedious process which requires a lot of understanding so now that we've uh, completed step five, uh, I think it's time we move into a more hands-on approach. And uh, let me just show you the software that we would be using. The editing software is none other but Adobe Premiere and it can be downloaded from its site. This is the Adobe site and you can buy Premiere, you can take a free seven day trial and you can collaborate from anywhere, it has the cloud uh, feature as well and yeah so now I already have it installed so I will show you its uh, basic features okay so now we can take the more hands-on approach I will show you how folder organization is done it's a uh, fairly simple you create a project folder such as this one project name date tagging ID in case some digital media servers and they require a tagging ID so that projects are easier to find later on. Within your project folder, you want to subdivide your video into one folder, your audio into one folder, your Premiere Pro project, the software that we'll be using into one folder and your resources, which might include images, logos, all kinds of graphical add-ons, backgrounds and things like that. Now, once you've set up your project folder, it's time to set up your project. I will also so show you the basic tools in Adobe. As you can see within my project folder, I also have uh, my videos that I've downloaded. Uh, just simple videos of a man walking on the beach. That's what we'll be editing. And I have a music file as well, two music files to see which one would be better to use. And it'll be a simple multi uh, camera video which will be probably 30 seconds long or maybe even shorter just to show you the basics of how Premiere works and how you can make a final video. So this is Premiere. This is your interface. This is how it opens. Uh, first you start with obviously creating a new project. Fairly simple. In the drop down file menu, you have new and project. Then you browse to your project folder. In my case, it's over here within my demo. Project name 
and I keep this as my project folder. These are your scratch disks and your rendering and playback engine. You can use CUDA or software only depending. This solely depends on the format of files that you're using. I generally prefer CUDA, which uses the GPIO acceleration. My display format is time code, which is uh, seconds and not in frames. And my audio samples are in that display format. My capture format is TV or LTV. And scratch disk should be same as project, generally that works out best. And your previews and audios and everything else and auto save should always be on. Uh, generally Premiere's auto save is on by default, but you can change that setting. You can make it say that the 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes as you wish. So naming your project. So now I should just name it demo underscore test. So now that we've started the project, you should notice that the user interface will change, the graphical user interface will change and this is a uh, standard layout which I have modified a little but I can show you the other workspaces. This is technically all panels. You can also switch to editing in which you will get your source monitor on the left and your program monitor on the left. Right. The source monitor basically plays all the clips that are in your bin and your program monitor plays all the clips that are on your timeline. So now let me just uh, show you some essential things. First we shall uh, import our footage. It is very easily simple. You just right click and import and you go to the folder that you have stored your videos in or audios and you can just control A select all and import them. There's also another fairly simple way in which I should show you with my audio files. As soon as my as you wait for your files to get imported, you can then create a new bin. Very simple, right click and create bin, video, and I should put all my clips into my video folder. Then I shall show you how to, the other way to import files, just drag and drop right over here into your project window pane. Now you can create another bin. I'm just using my mouse for now and just type in audio. Really simple. I'm not using keyboard shortcuts. When I get down to editing, I will be using shortcuts and I shall show you that as well. Now that my audio and video is in place, I should again right click, new item, create sequence. You can add to it from here. You can do it from here. Sequence. So your sequence is generally again, I will just call it. Uh, each underscore walk or maybe run will make it a run and uh, within your formats it's important to understand what format you shot in for now i'm just going to keep it as the default format although my frame size is not correct i would require a higher frame size so you can actually choose a DVC Pro 1080i 15 frames per second, which would be the closest. But actually you just select the default and then what I generally do is I edit the sequence settings. Once I create the sequence, so then over here I shall change the frame size and resolution. But actually let's just delete this, I think this is a mistake. Uh, I'm going to delete this sequence. What alternatively you can do is just select the file that you want and we just make sure this is the right dimension. This is 4K. I just want HD 7 by 1920 by 1080. I'll right click on my frame on my clip and I'll say new sequence from frame. So my sequence has been created. I shall call this sequence 1. And sequences are nothing essentially but your timeline. The clips on your timeline. So for now, I have one clip on my timeline. As I double click sequence, my sequence opens. Very simple. Now you're ready to understand how to edit and begin editing the clips. So this is the first video that you have in your sequence. So this I've just put there as a placeholder. Right now, there's nothing been done. Uh, now we go to our clips and we do a viewing. So I'll open. If I double click the clip, it'll open in my source monitor. I shall delete this from my sequence for now. 
and I can play the clip. Wait, I shall put on the history pane so that you can see what controls I'm using. History is actually on. Let me just switch to it. Yeah. So these are all my history things. As you can see, everything I do will show up here. And as you can see, I'm playing the clip and watching it. I can also scroll through it with my mouse. Where I feel I can use the clip from is where I can put a aim point with the control I, that is your aim point. And I play it and I choose my out point. Yeah, let's just that as the out point. So I've got a first step. And if I play it here, yeah. I just picked it up and I dragged it and I dropped it on my timeline and I got the first shot that I would be using. Maybe we can even use a second. So I hit my I click out again. I've set my out point as you can see by clicking O. I and O. These are shortcuts again. I shall show you the shortcuts once. The keyboard shortcuts are fairly simple. You can access them from the help menu, click keyboard, and uh, you will be redirected to the Adobe site. And these are the shortcut keys. Fairly simple. Space is to play, stop, toggle. Let me just zoom into this for you. So, in space is play and toggle. You can go step back, step forward, previous clip, next clip. So on and so on. P for the pen tool. Uh, I J K L again. Uh, shuttle right, shuttle left. This is your playing speed. Shuttle stop. So you can speed up the playback with these two buttons and stop with A. And uh, there are many such other keyboard shortcuts that you should familiarize yourself with if you want to, you know, edit at a higher speed. In. So now that uh, shortcuts are out of the way, as you can see, this is the first step that someone is taking. Now to Cut somewhere on my timeline. I've shown you how to select your clips over here in the source monitor. Now I'll show you how to cut a clip on the timeline. So if I'll just watch this video now, I think this is a more of a tight mid shot. And he is walking on the beach, running on the beach, run beach. So I renamed my shot as per. The actual uh, action happening in the frame. Now let's look at the next shot, man running. This seems to be a longer shot. And uh, yeah, this is the action area when he comes into frame and he goes out of frame. I don't need the rest of the horizon, obviously. I want to just uh, make a small video of a man running. So this is the entire work area that I have. And I should rename this man. Sorry, beach. Score man. Score long. Shot. Now I put my long shot here. I will start with my long shot, obviously. Then go in and set the scene. And then obviously go into my closer title shot. Let's see how that looks. I just move these clips on the time timeline with the mouse and I brought this in and I'll just show you that again actually as you might have missed it. I just drag my clip from here with my in and out point set. I put it here. I click the space in between and I use backspace to delete that space. Then wherever my cursor is, I look at my uh, program monitor and I see where I can put the next shot. I think this when it's a man running, you need to notice the cyclic movement of the limbs. And then at this point when he hits the ground is where I would like to bring my second shot in. So there are many ways you can do that. I should just zoom in my timeline. I'll just stretch that out. You can zoom in with Ctrl plus, Ctrl minus as well. And plus and minus will zoom in and zoom out your timeline laterally. Whereas this lets you increase your track width and height. And then you can see thumbnails as well within your clip. So this is where I feel I'll bring in the next shot. So I choose the blade tool. This is nothing but a cutting tool. This is how you cut. If your snapping is on, it will cut to where your cursor is or the end or the start. 
So put your cursor where you feel you want to make a cut. Take your blade tool, you should try to select from here. But since I know the shortcuts, I generally type C button and you make your cut. Then V for your selection tool. Then you select the portion that you do not want and you can press backspace or delete to discard it. Now there is a gap between the two shots. You click the gap and you can press backspace or delete to remove that gap. Alternatively, you can also grab your clip. If snapping is on, it will snap to the next clip. You should feel it uh, just set in there into that place automatically. But now uh, we obviously have a problem with the uh, side in which the man is running. So from here to here is running left to right. And from here to here is running right to left. So these shots will look like the man is running backwards and forwards. So that will not do. It will basically break the flow because it's an opposite direction. You want, you generally, uh, it's uh, it's very similar to stage theatrics. Enter left, exit right, enter left, exit right. Otherwise, uh, it would seem as though the man is running in the opposite direction. So let's look for another shot to replace this one or this one. We shall go to our third shot, which is an aerial shot of a man running from behind. Since he's running from behind, yeah, we can switch from this shot. So we'll just take the portion which is running from here. We can press play, press I, input, and out. With go, drag, and draw. The other tools that you have here is a text tool, a pen tool. To write on the screen, uh, make lines on the screen, rectangle tool to make shapes, ellipse tool to make a circle. These are other graphical elements that you can design with these tools. The slip tool, slide out, razor tool which is the most basic tool which I'll be using now, ripple edit and drag select forward tool. Drag select forward is simple to use. You can also press A to select it. You can select all the clips in your track and move them at in one go. And alternatively, you can also do a, you can select the V tool, Control, or A, and also move all the clips at the same time. But this gives you the advantage that if I don't want to move the first clip, but I want to move the next two, I can do that. But right now, we'll just be sticking to a simple razor tool. Now to make just a very basic video with the razor tool. So as you can see, the man. We have a shot of him running from behind, so we should put that here, and uh, we should play that shot. Now, if you notice again, there is a directional problem if we were to put this shot after that, because in the water suddenly is on his right, whereas in this, the water is on the man's left and the sand is on the right. So these are things you need to pay attention to while editing, otherwise you will have a directional movement from and continuity will be more continuity. Continuity is one of a very important aspect of editing and shooting. So each shot should continue into the other. It should be shot with that purpose. But since I'm using found footage, I have to make do with what I have. So he's running across the beach. Then we cut to another shot of him running across the beach. Although you can clearly identify that it's not the same man as the previous man was wearing a white shirt and this man is in a you could say a vest although it does seem like a different moment in time and as though he was running the whole day and changed into a vest by evening but uh, that is not the case it does not convey the right message but we have another shot of the same man running even further off this is an aerial drone shot, so this will match perfectly. And uh, initially, we'll start with the even longer shot. So uh, we have one aerial shot, which is this one from his following him from the back. And then we have this other aerial shot in which he they, it crosses him completely. So we'll start with this shot. I think this is a very nice shot, and we'll play it in. Put our in point and just before he's about to cross okay, we can go back and forward with the arrow keys and press the up button and I will pull the shot in. So now as you can see we are following him 
following him and just before the camera crosses him we shall cut back to the we shall cut to the other shot and then we'll bring in the other shot so that's a nice long opening shot and then we cut to show that will work or we have to use this shot after this and just move into the empty frame I think that's let's look at the other shot that we have this one got this environment is completely different and uh, yeah, now we have two shots in the manually. The ones here. Then the camera over clicks in. And then we can actually use this shot. We won't use it with the person in it. Then we just extend it when he's not in frame. You can extend the shots by clicking on the edge and pulling towards one side. So we use it from this portion. Again, you can click on one edge and push and make the clip smaller as well. So just click, um, press down, pull, push and release the clip. So this is very easy. Now that we have a beat shot, since uh, so now our sequence is the man is running. The camera crosses him. And there's an empty beach. And then but I'm still not satisfied. I still want this shot to be the first shot. So what we can also do is, logically it would make sense to have, uh, uh, we can have the man running. We cross over to the empty beach. Now I'll spread it up with the L key. So we can have the empty beach. And then, we can have the man running again. And, and so now what we want to do is we want to make it seamless as you can see what I was talking about earlier the rhythm and continuity so now that you can see this shot seems a little bit long it seems stretched at this point I think I'll keep it for a little less time Maybe one way two way three waves and just again Take the edge and slide and come to this shot. And yeah, I have a man running. Camera takes off. We shot like an intercut, there's an insert shot, and then back to the man running. So, this speed shot actually acted as a B roll for me. And now, what I'll do is I'll bring in the audio. So, uh, again, I think right now you guys won't be able to show my computer audio, but uh, Yeah, I feel this is a nice tropical sound that goes with like the mood of the video as well, the nice orange sunset and man running across the beach. Otherwise, we have my friend. This uh, sounds too mellow. I don't think I'll go for it. This is a slower version. We should always listen to all the tracks. Listening and viewing are key to editing, always. So now I'll go with the first track that I selected. I'll just drag and drop it into my timeline. Fairly simple into the audio section. As you can see, the tracks are divided in this way. Within your sequence, you have multiple video tracks, one, two, three. Then you have audio tracks, one, two, three. Then you have a master track as well. Then you have locks. Once you lock a track, you cannot do anything. You cannot select it, you cannot move it, you cannot apply effects to it, nothing. Similarly for the video tracks, if you press the toggle track, 
then it will not show you what's in that track. But it will show you the tracks above and below. So if I put that there, and it's showing me the footage because then control Z to undo whatever you have done. And if I remove the eye, it will show me the track again. Similarly for the audio, if I uh, mute the audio, it won't let me listen to the next track. If I uh, solo the audio, it will only listen, let me listen to what's in the selected track. So for now, I will not solo or mute anything. Uh, as you can see, if I pull this out and I basically zoom into my track, control plus, uh, you will notice and these are the track selection. So if I were to control the plus, I mm -hmm. would select my video track mm -hmm. uh, and select to select my audio track. Okay. So now these are the audio waves. You can see where the music is dipping and picking up and starting. So it starts with a beat, but I think that beat is too loud and uh, it's popping too much. So this is another use of the pen tool. You can literally make keyframes on your audio wave. So that's the level of your volume actually. If you pick it up, you'll get and if you bring it down, you can completely mute it. So you want that to be in the middle at zero. And generally, that's a nice balanced place it should be. I'll just revert it back. And uh, I made two dots with my pen tool, which are keyframes. I created two keyframes. You can create as many as you like. You can undo them as well. And the first one that I created, I took it down to zero. And I still don't think it's gradual enough, so I'll just take it forward. Slightly less. So now if you noticed, we need to cut this to the music. So I want the next shot to come in on this heavy on that beat. So I'm just gonna see where that beat goes. There. there. I'm gonna zoom into the uh file to see exactly where that beat goes with the plus and now we move our clip to just that point so that it's all in one nice rhythm. You can move these uh, uh, panels around, navigate your mouse into the middle of two panels and you can shift left, shift right and uh, similarly up and down, just click and release. Now let's see. And then yeah, that's a nice place for the second. The vocal is coming in, otherwise, you want that track to completely play out and you know eventually reach its uh, natural end. That's also a nice way to get the music. Now, yeah. a little bit shorter. And yeah. with the audio clips, you can just go to the edge and pull it in. Just give it a gradual slow. Now, video seems to end abruptly. So for that, we we're basically now we're done with those three stages that I uh, explained to you about. First was to organize your media, then to watch your footage and create your assembly cut. As you could see, when I just put my shots there, that was my assembly cut, and after that, I marked my footage as well. Then I fine-tuned the three cuts that I wanted to use. And I inserted a B-roll as well, which was the mid shot. And uh, post that, I sort of cleaned up my timeline when I cut it. You noticed I made one cut according to the music and the second one. But there's also more cleanup that I need to do. As you can see, I... Uh, picked up the volume on one edge and lowered the volume on the other edge. That's the music getting cleaned up. But what about the abrupt end to the video? It just goes black, right? So to stop that from happening, you can uh, use a tape to black. It's generally the default transition, but it's also available in the effects tab. So if you just go to the effects tab and you write fade to black, there are many, 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 many effects that I cannot get into right now. But uh, this is also known as dip to black. Yeah. And you can just, uh, you can actually search for any effect within the video transitions or video effects. And you can click on them and you can drop them. This effect is a dip, it's generally placed at the end of one clip. 
So as you can see, now I'll make sure that both my audio and video end at the same point. Again, just by dragging, you can go to the end of a clip by pressing the up and down arrow keys. I'll just select the right track. And as you can see, with my up and down arrow keys, I can go from clip to clip on my timeline. And then if I were to press the end button, I would go to the end of my timeline. And if I am to press the home button, I would go to the beginning of my timeline. End, end. And then with the left key, I can go to the last two frames and I can move frame by frame. So see, I'm showing you the effect dip to back, frame by frame. As you can see, I'm one frame at a time. And each second, I would have 24 or 30 frames depending on my sequence. Right now, I have 20 frames. Our frames have 19, 20, and our vertical of 80. You can also go to the edge of the effect and change the duration of the effect. See, I'm going down to just, let's say, 18 frame transition. Otherwise, it was almost a second long. Now, I've taken it much shorter, so it could go black faster. So, do you see that? That's a natural end. And I've come to the end of my timeline. So, I'll press the out button, which will bring the end of my video to one frame further than the end. Then I will go one frame behind and I'll press the out button again to end in the last frame. Then the home button will take me to the beginning of the track. Again, I will press the I button, which is the in and the out. So as you can see, the whole section is highlighted. This is my out. I can pull it with my cursor as well. Click, keep it pressed and pull. And I can pull this side the in as well. This is basically, this is called my work area. From my in to my out. Everything else is discarded by the software while exporting the timeline. Only the in and the out. You can also have an option to export the entire timeline. However, most editors choose to export the areas they consider within their work area. I will not get into multi tracks right now, like the second audio, third audio, but or the second video track or the third video track, as that would become slightly more complex. But when you have multiple cameras, you can set that in your second video. You can set the logo in your third video track, etc., etc. And similarly for audio, you can have your music track on one layer, your dialogue track in another layer, and your sound effects in another layer, and so forth. Every layer should generally contain one layer of your video or one layer of your audio and it should be distinguished from the previous layer that way. So in the beginning also we can uh, add a tip. Another way to add the tip is uh, you just select the edge, you right click and you can say apply default transition. Generally the dip to black is the default transition or the cross dissolve which also acts as the dip to black if it's at the edge of one clip. Otherwise, a cross dissolve can be placed between two clips and it dissolves each other. I'll show you that effect as well. So as of now, it will act as a as a dip from black. Yeah. And or an iris open as you would say. And uh, you can again click the edge of the effect and reduce the time that it takes to animate. And then if I were to put a cross dissolve between two, uh, I'll just show you what that does. You can again select the edge between two clips, right click, apply the pop transition and you can have a yeah. it dipped one while increasing the other. It can be used in places where you do not have an exact match cut for a, after a shot, but cross dissolve generally are considered sort of taboo in editing, you know you know, low hanging fruit when, but sometimes if you don't have any other option, you can use a cross dip resolve. Many clients won't really have a problem with it and uh, it generally saves a lot of time as well. So, uh, another thing, coming to another thing within the effects, you have all kinds of effects. I'll just briefly go over them with you. You have dip to black, dip to white, uh, and you can search for them in the search bar. Then you have things like adjust, blur and sharpen, channel, color correction, distort, 
generate image control, all kinds of transitions and effects, 3D motion, dissolve, immerse video, I use page speed, slide, wipe, zoom. I did not show you how to zoom. I will show you that right now. And you have other audio effects also to clean your audio, denoise, e reverb. Um, then you have obviously graphic equalizer, 10 band, 20 band, 30 band, a low pass that will uh, only let the low frequency noises pass through and a high pass that will only let the high frequency noises pass through. Similarly for volume enhancers, vocal enhancers, there are all kinds of effects. We cannot really go into each and every one of them. But apart from the effects, I'll just show you the basics of Premiere. So as you can, you've already understood how to create your project and your bins. Then you've seen your basic tool, which is the blade, the pen, and the selection tool. Then the source monitor, when you uh, when you when you click on an audio file, will turn into the WAV file. When you click on the video file, will turn into the video. So I would say we should add a slight zoom into this, which is also called a Ken Burns. He would use it on images in documentaries. You can search for him. He was a, the first filmmaker to actually use a zoom on still images. And uh, it was named after him then. The effect was called a Ken Burn. K-E-N-B-U-R-N. -E so we go to the, to the up button, we go to the absolute edge of the video. As you can see, the cursor replicates itself over here in the effects control as well. When I set my position, I set my scale with by clicking these two time clock icons. They create keyframes within my time. As you can see, I'll just select them and put them here. This is what a keyframe looks like. Keyframes also have a small bar to represent, you know, the value at which they are moving. Um, I will not get into this as of now. That's the velocity and the per second velocity. So just simply we will put our first keyframes at 100. I will only change my scale. My position will remain the same for now. And we will go up to probably 110, which is fine. And probably a little, I won't go too left, but a little left. Maybe even scale this to frame size. Okay. Uh, scaling to frame size is required if you're using a video as well, which is much bigger than your frame, you would scale to frame size. And now I think all are 1920 for me, but let's just check. Now, as you can see, that motion is not lost. We're zooming into this, if you can notice slowly. The sand is become coming closer and closer. The edge of the water is coming closer and closer into frame because we applied that zoom. We increased the scale. See? Now that motion is still there. That's the end of that small video. Uh, now, what we can what we do is once we've made our video, we need to obviously export our video. So again, I select the I press home, it comes to zero, I press in, and I press in, it goes to the end of my timeline, and I press the up, right move a frame in, as you can see, I move one frame in, and I don't want that black frame at the end, and I press out again, and it's like that. Now I want to export my frame. Now we get into export formats. I will not show you how to color correct or uh, do these other changes, but uh, I'll just show you where it can be done from. This is your audio mixer. From here, you can apply effects to each of your audio tracks independently. There's a color tab where you can do all your color mixing, but I will not get into that right now. It's a complicated process and I will save that for later. But generally before exporting, one would add an effect. So I'll just show you one, one track actually. So you can just go to your effects tab. You can select color. And then I generally use the lumetrical effect. I'll put it on this one. You can see this shot and this shot, the color is the same, but here we have a slightly darker shot, probably later on in the evening. So I'll just go to my basic creative, but now I'll just show you how to increase exposure. And that's a brighter shot already. I just increased the exposure by one. Now we're relatively on the same scale, but my browns are very brown, as you can see. And here there's whitish sand in frame, and the oranges are also, the sky is pink in these, but it's orange in this. So I can reduce a little contrast to get that effect, can I? Slightly, maybe. 
yeah my brown is in that dark anymore and I can increase my white a bit to really bring yeah I think it matches this one but it doesn't match the first one but that's okay the each shot should match the color to its previous shot and to its next shot so that way you know you have a standardized color across your timeline and then it's nothing sticking out like a sore thumb. So now uh, I've shown you how to just apply the effect. I'm really not going into the depths of the metric color. There are lots of things that you can do in there. Selective color grading, contrast, saturation, and many, many other, other things through color grading. We'll not get into that too much. So like in your in point, you want your end, or you move the frame window, you select your out point. Uh, now you'll export your video. So you go to the file menu, you say export, and then you click on media. After that, uh, you choose your format. H.264 is your uh, relatively simple MP4 format. There are many other formats as you can see. MPG2, MPG3, QuickTime Movie, which gives you an MPG format. TIFF, that gives you a different format altogether. Animated GIFs, uh, DPX, PMP. We will not get into what different different formats mean at this point in time. But H.264 is your standard MP4. Let's just stick to that for now and here's your bitrate so the different different bitrates that are adaptive to different different devices and platforms you have your youtube 480p you have your vimeo 4k twitter and etc etc but i'd like to stick to custom or i generally not source to high or medium bitrate but if i were to stick with custom i will just select that and uh, then the output name obviously and your output destination uh, so you gotta go to the file that to your project folder and once inside your project folder you can create a new folder for your exported file and then you can call it export or output depending on which you prefer select your folder select your file name mine was demo best and save and save then you can come down to your effects. Right now we don't have any Lumetri look for an LUP, which is an applied Lumetri color to your whole timeline. We do not have that. We not we won't be going into that right now. Uh, these are some conformatory brightness and contrast, which we won't use. An image overlay, you can uh, put a logo or a, a watermark on your entire timeline. Name overlay is similar. You can put a name in the right top corner, the left top corner. After that, you have a time code overlay. If you click this, then you get a time code throughout your video. So if someone's just previewing your video, you can apply a time code and they can see the exact time at which they would want the changes. This is for like clients when you're sending them on first cut and you're expecting changes. So on and so forth. Loudness normalization. And a lot of effects can be applied to the entire timeline. Then we come back to video, basic video settings. Uh, my width and height is fine, 90, 20, 10, 80, full HD. If I want to change it, I can untick this and if I don't want them to remain in the same ratio, I can untick that and change whichever one independently, but I'm fine with the way things are. My favorite is 25, field order, I won't get into right now, but there are uppers and lowers and this was relatively when you had your, uh, not your DVC pros, but even older than that, old generation video, magnetic video tapes, and in that you had fields, uh, which had something to do with interlaced video and the way interlaced video is exported in upper and lower fields but now it's all progressive so we'll just keep the field order as progressive generally digital media and online media and all progressive you can render at maximum maximum depth mm -hmm. that's up to you hardware encoding or software encoding hardware we want the power of your gpu while encoding VBR pass 1. Generally, I select that as my bitrate encoder. I will not get into the other bitrate encoders as of now. Target bitrate. So, you can check your source. And generally, the bitrate of your source is what should be your highest bitrate here. There's no point choosing a higher bitrate than your source. In fact, as of now, my source uh, bitrate, we can go to my folder. I should show you how to check your source bitrate. 
and go into video right click on the clips that you've used properties details and here is my bitrate it's 85,000 kbps which makes it around 8 mbps and let's come back so instead of 6 I'll make it 8 which is fine on the high end and the advanced settings we won't get into this video is not VR so we won't take that and as of now my estimate file size yeah, is 12 seconds so 12 mb is fine for me and I will export it here. I will show you how to queue it into a new media encoder in probably another video. But as of now, we will export it within Premiere itself. So let me export it. Yes, you need a very fast computer to use Premiere. Otherwise, encoding and exporting takes a lot of time. Now we will go to our export. We have selected. And uh, as you can see, the demo desk file exists over here. I should play it. And that is how you create a simple video in Premiere Pro. Nothing too complicated. And now we uh, basically come to the end of this uh, video. Thank you for watching. I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy, a free initiative by Great Learning where you can access over 200 plus courses with 1000 plus hours of free content on trending high demand domains absolutely free. Register now to complete the course and get your free certificate of completion. Check out the link in the description of the video below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, so make sure you are sharing this video with your friends and colleagues as well. Make sure to comment on the video any queries or suggestions and I will respond to your comments.